So you can see here, now it says enhanced highway access is no longer available and it asked me to put my hands on the wheel. Hey there, welcome back to the channel. So I wanna answer one big question today, which is, is the Rivian driver assistance any good in its current state? As someone who used to drive a Tesla and has driven Stellantis, you know, vehicles such as Jeep with various different levels of driver assistance, it's a big deal to me that driver assistance is something that's not only good today, but has a lot of upside in the future. So I wanted to, you know, I looked on the internet and there wasn't a whole lot of clips around showing off the new driver assistance, especially the hands-free component on the highway. So I wanted to give you a little bit more of an extended clip here so you can see how it operates, see how the failures interact, how they notify you and how graceful or ungraceful that may be. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, time for a little demo here of hands-free. It only works on certain parts of the highway though. It doesn't seem to work everywhere that the normal driver assistance does. Got some traffic ahead of us here, which is a good example for when it's best to be hands-free and a little bit lower stress. Getting into I-5 South here on a Saturday. So the automatic blinker didn't work right away on the merge lane, but it will work here in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So doing manual right now, like center in the lane, the turn signal turns off. Right now I have the lane centering option, which I'll tap twice to engage. And it has the little hands next to it, so I'm going to let go. And looking forward, we're all set. I can adjust my following distance and speed with this, these controls here, just like normal. I want to get an opportunity here. I'm going to ask it to change lanes, which it will execute by itself. Now, even though there was a gap there, it didn't like it because the car was coming up too fast behind me. And now, it sees an opportunity to execute it by slowing down slightly. And gets back into a center lane position. Speed up here a little bit if we're going to be in this left lane. Pushing and holding up or pushing and holding down will go up by five miles per hour. Single taps are single mile per hour changes. And if I touch the wheel again, it comes off of the hands-free mode. And when I let go again, it goes back into it. Going a little bit slow for the left lane here, so I'm gonna move back over. Pretty smooth. Now we've got some more traffic up here ahead of us. Just kind of smoothly drifts down. It's not always perfectly smooth. There's big, big changes in speed ahead of us. So it's a little bit more jarring, but subtle changes are really smooth. Now it does not do lane positioning uh, according to other traffic in the lane. So the nearby lanes, got ID buzz here. It doesn't shift, it doesn't shift away. There's a semi there that we're just passing. Probably can't see it on camera. But just continue to be hands-free as long as I look forward on the road. Now if I look away, it will start to complain and eventually start dinging at me. You see a notification down here in the bottom left to tell me to keep my eyes on the road. So I'll look kind of off axis, not unsafely, but off axis so that it doesn't think I'm paying attention. There's the first warning. 
visual. And as you continue, then I look forward and it goes away. So you can tell the warnings escalate over time. It will eventually kick you out. There that ID buzz. So when you think about autonomy, I think this is what most people actually probably want to a certain degree. They don't want the car making too many decisions for them in terms of lane changes. They just want to go in the lane you're in and decide where you want to get off. Which for that, it does a pretty good job in the areas that it works. The biggest drawback right now is the number of locations that this feature can be enabled. But like I said, it's not even all stretches of hands-on, which is the most surprising part of this. So you can see here, now it says Enhanced Highway Assist is no longer available and it asked me to put my hands on the wheel. So we, we've left the zone of hands free. And that's how the transition works. Which is about the zone where it started on, on northbound. So I'm not sure what criteria they're using to map for increased confidence levels for hands free versus hands on. But that is indeed how it works. but the in-lane performance seems to be exactly the same when you're hands-on. No difference as of yet. All right, so as you can see, it's actually a pretty smooth system overall, but it does have some flaws. The number one being that it has to be a pre-mapped highway. This is definitely the, the largest drawback of the way that the current Rivian Assist system actually works. And when it does work, you can see that there's different modalities, which can be kind of confusing for some drivers if they're less experienced in semi-autonomous things. So as you could tell that there was a, a warning and a, and a handoff essentially from an area where the system had higher confidence, where it allowed me to be hands-free with the driver monitoring, making sure I was looking forward and paying attention compared to when it then transitioned to requiring hands-on against all the pre-mapped highways. So both of those were pretty comfortable and it, it was not a super jarring sound effect, but there is a handoff piece and process there that you have to be aware of. and. Um, other than that, it, it's really about lane positioning. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Now, further down the stretch of road here, we do have a, a section that challenges it in terms of lane keeping in general. So I wanna show you that clip and give you a feel for pretty much the only section of road I've seen Rivian fail so far. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're gonna see if we can reproduce some weird behavior we had on the driver assist mode here where there were some dark lines on, on the highway here in one of the lanes. It's about the only time that the car has gotten kind of screwy on lane positioning with us, so I'll try to demonstrate what that's like. Probably have to fast forward through parts of this though. <laughs> So see how it's bending and weaving because of this dark line in the road. It was less dramatic that time, but it definitely lost lane centering due to some dark lines on the road. The paint is also worn off a fair bit here. So maybe it's harder for the cameras to identify and tr track the trajectory of the painted lines. I'm not sure if the visualization or if you caught part of that on, on the road, but it definitely did a bit of this in the lane. I think we were going a little bit faster last time, and so those are a little bit more dramatic than they were in this experience right here. I've also noticed that when you're through sections that have had recent construction, but the construction is complete, 
lanes. Well, it doesn't like construction at all. But if there's been recent construction where the lanes may have shifted slightly compared to uh, what it was when they mapped it originally, it gets a little pickier if you're in the far perimeter lanes. So, for instance, on I-5 going through Everett, there was a big section where there was recent construction for the last couple of years and they, they widened the road. And if you're in the far left lane or even the far right lane, the car will complain enough to fully kick you out of the assistance mode. But if you're in any of the interior lanes, it seems to be happy. So definitely some limitations to the, the pre-mapped highway situation. Okay, so now you've seen a little bit about the Rivian Assist system, specifically in areas that it's known to be challenged. It's worth noting here that I've gone miles and miles and miles of the hands-free, and that is a beautiful, blissful experience when you're in the operating domain for hands-free. You just sit there comfortably, enjoy the ride. You feel partially as a passenger. You are able to put more of your attention to what's going on around you, actually, than normal driving because you're putting less brain power to all the other micro movements and everything else that are just part of driving a car. Now, that being said, the Rivian drives really fun. So there are back roads that you're not going to want to use a system like this anyway. Now, the clear limitation here is operating domain, even for the hands-on experience. And the fact that the hands-off experience is an even smaller subset of that is kind of a big deal. But I will say, let's address the elephant in the room. Let's compare it to the Tesla system, both autopilot and full self-driving, which I have a fair amount of experience with both. I would say that the clear win for Tesla compared to Rivian is that it can be used essentially everywhere. But Rivian actually has a lot of attributes about it that I think make it a really comfortable experience to use and likely what most people are looking for when they're looking for these semi-autonomous type solutions. So the fact that the hands-on experience is capacitive instead of torque, you know, if you're comparing free autopilot compared to normal lane keep, that's a big deal. That That's a, a lot more comfortable to just kind of sit there and hang on to the wheel, you know, sort of drape your fingers over the wheel uh, in a way that's comfortable. You can cruise like that forever. And then when you hit the zones, which is seemingly pretty wide, but not 100% on highways where you can be hands off, that is even more comfortable. And myself and my wife both find it even more pleasant, the fact that it's not going to do erratic lane changes like full self-driving would do or how, you know, it's how FST would like get away from the exit lane you need to be in, that kind of weirdness. Generally speaking, we just want the car to do what we told it to do, which is keep the lane, keep the distance from the car ahead of us. And when we tell it to change lanes, we can do so. Now, Rivian is very ambitious in this in this regard. So I'm sure in, in the future, you know, they've already said that there will be automatic lane changes as an option. I really hope that that's a toggle. And the number one piece is that later this year, it will work in areas that are not just pre-mapped highways for Gen 2. So that's a pretty big deal. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this. Like I said, there wasn't much content on the internet about the Rivian system as it, as it stands today on Gen 2. So I hope this gives you a sample and something to compare it to. If you are considering buying a Rivian, definitely check out the link down below where you can get an extra 500 bucks towards some cool gear. So I hope you found that helpful and like, subscribe if you want to get more videos about Rivian EVs and the future of transportation. Talk soon.